You know, I think, like, specifically the chief is one of those things that I had to learn about. You know, mm -hmm. I, I don't think I had a good understanding of the first time the chief was ever mentioned to me was actually I was in St. Louis for my sister's volleyball tournament, and we were visiting, like, a cathedral. And the mm -hmm. priest or whatever, it was a Catholic church, came out, and he's like, oh, I was wearing my Illinois shirt because I just got in. He's like, did you know they're taking away the chief? Blah, 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 blah. And was, like, really angry about it. And I'd never even heard of the chief. So I was kind of like oh, yeah, that stinks, you know, traditions are important, you know, this is right. a priest telling me this, you know. Right. Um, so I think then going on the journey of realizing how horrific it is to use a culture as a costume or a prop mm -hmm. or a mascot um, really made me feel like it took me a long time to get it, and I kind of want to help other people who were where I was. It's, it's tricky, and I have the privilege <laughs> of not having grown up in a community, mm -hmm. um, the friends that I have in Champaign-Urbana have expressed to me that they kind of see both sides, right? right. Because it's been a part of the fabric of Champaign-Urbana for a number of years, and I've only been to two football games. Mm -hmm. um, the mascotry everywhere was kind of uh, bothersome, so I'm kind of glad I never, I, I guess that I didn't take advantage of that more as a student. But I, what would I say to community members who really support the chief? That's definitely tough. I think there are a lot of times that symbols mean something completely different to two different communities. Right. Uh, a possible analogy might be the Confederate flag. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to most people of color, to it's, us, that represents historic legacies of white right. supremacy, of terrorism, racism, Jim Crow, slavery, subjugation, just horrific, horrible things mm -hmm. that formed uh, the South in this country. And to someone who was raised in that environment and privileged enough to like go with the status quo, it is a form of like ignorance to not realize how others interpret that symbol. So right. I get the complication and I'm not quite sure what I would say to a community member. Um, I'd love to engage them in conversation and, and hear more of their perspective and then mm -hmm. probably point them to uh, Native American students or uh, indigenous activists in the community or writers who would be able to talk more effectively about these issues. Um, just speaking as someone who doesn't identify as a member of that community. The blacklisting or boycott, I, I don't right. think I'm doing that much. I just know, I saw that people on my social media pages and in, um, in my life that I talked to were kind of wanting a resource. So I created you know, one document, one post that I thought could possibly be a running list of businesses that choose to support something while all the facts are out there like about the history of white supremacy in our community mm -hmm. and legacies of uh, racism in the chief, like all that is out there and if businesses kind of want to ignore all that in the name of garnering a quick buck, um, I thought it could be a good idea to have like a communal resource for that. Passing it, especially with the, um, the three in one yeah. stuff, right? You know, the music director doesn't believe that that is evocative of Native American imagery or mascotry or the chief, which is silly. You know, and the university will say, well, we can't control what the fans shout from the stands, but you can control the music that triggers that. And I think one of my advisors mentioned to me before that um, whenever those songs are played, it's sort of like a, a funeral knell, like a death knell, like a bell at a funeral playing for the chief, right. reminding people every single sporting event, this is Definitely. still here, yeah. the specter of him is around and I think it's not a thing that our university has really leaned into with its full force. You know people have been having these conversations like far before uh, I ever came to campus right. and they'll be happening probably long after I'm gone. Um, I think students have done a good job of especially uh, native and indigenous students of like organizing and I was not here on campus during the most horrific bouts of battles between administration and students and community members, but I know that the the ghost of them is still all around us, and mm -hmm. it is kind of a reminder every time you walk into TGI Fridays and see the huge chief of moral or cams or brothers or legends. Like, I get that that's still a part of the community and will always be a part of the conversations. I think it is productive to maybe do two things, which is one, if we have the capacity to do so, sit down and have conversation with people who support the chief. Um, friends, family, community members who really see it in a completely different light. Mm -hmm. And that was my journey, and that was uh, my girlfriend's journey, and that's been a lot of my friends' journeys. And then at the same time, too, I think that university administrators can take a very hard line stance on this 
because they've often just been paying at lip service. Like, yeah. no, we don't officially use the chief anymore. But they march in our homecoming parade. Right. But you can't go to a sporting event at Illinois without being smacked in the face with it. But we've never heard statement like, like other than a, a, you know, again, lip service to political correctness. There's not been any sort of action on the part of our administrators. So, I guess it is hard to look to them for support or to feel that they actually care about this beyond. Uh, doing as much as they have to do, towing up to the line while still giving the alumni what they need to be satisfied. Mm -hmm.